there is no greatest or smallest number. Numbers are infinite in both directions and serve as their foundation for quantifying all aspects of existence. We rely on them to measure time from minuscule fractions of a second to spans of thousands of millennia. They allow us to calculate distances, whether between everyday objects or the vast expanse separating galaxies, distances measured in the time it takes light to reach us across the cosmos. The universe is vast, some even describe it as infinite, as its boundaries remain unknown. It is composed of the smallest conceivable elements. Consider the atom, the fundamental unit of matter. Trillions can fit within the period at the end of this sentence. To comprehend such scales, we depend on extraordinarily large numbers. Yet, we often underestimate just how immense some of these numbers truly are. One such example is the Googleplex, a number so large it defies intuitive understanding. A Googleplex is a term used to describe the number 10 raised to the power of a Google, that is, 10 to the 100th power of zeros. Therefore, there are 100 zeros in a Google. Thus, simply put, a Googleplex is 10 to the power of 10. It is the largest number listed in the Standard English Dictionary and the total number of commas required to write an out in full using standard numerical formatting is estimated to be approximately 3.33 duotrig gentillion. This makes it virtually impossible to represent in full using conventional notation or physical space as it has so many zeros that it can't be written. Alternative naming conventions for this value include 10 duotrig gentillion on the short scale, 10 sextacillion on the long scale, or 10 sextacilliard in the Peltier long scale. Despite its staggering size, the Googleplex remains finite, and in the boundless realm of mathematics, it is merely one of an infinite set of even larger numbers. In mathematical terms, Google and Googleplex hold no intrinsic significance. These names are introduced primarily as a didactic tool by mathematicians seeking to illustrate the difference between extraordinarily large numbers and the concept of infinity in a way that will be accessible and engaging to the general public. While not functionally important in advanced mathematics, these numbers can be useful for comparative purposes. For instance, when estimating quantities such as the total number of subatomic particles in the observable universe or the theoretical number of possible positions in a game of chess. The term Google was coined in 1920 by nine-year-old Milton Sorota, the nephew of American mathematician Edward Kastner. Sorota later suggested the term Googleplex, whimsically defining it as one followed by writing zeros until you get tired. Kastner humorously noted the need for a more precise definition, remarking that different people get tired at different times and would never do to have Canera a better mathematician than Dr. Einstein, simply because he had more endurance and could write for longer. The terms Google and Googleplex were brought into popular awareness through the 1940 publication of Mathematics in the Imagination, co-authored by Edward Kastner and James R. Newman. Kastner was a mathematician affiliated with Columbia University, while Newman was both a mathematician and a practicing attorney in New York City. But just how large is a Googleplex? In truth, it defies human comprehension. Kastner introduced the term specifically to highlight the vast gap between between an extraordinary large finite number and the concept of infinity. While the number itself is finite, its magnitude is so immense that conventional understanding falls short. Nonetheless, a number of illustrative thought experiments can offer perspective, however abstract, on the scale of a Googleplex. To grasp the sheer magnitude of a Google, consider the ratio between the mass of an electron, approximately 10 to the power of negative 30 kilos, and the estimated mass of the observable universe, which ranges between 10 to the power of 50 and 10 to the power of 60 kilos. This yields a ratio on the order of 10 to the power of 80 to 10 to the power of 90, representing no more than a 10 billionth of a Google. Now consider the Googleplex, which is even more vast. A standard book can accommodate approximately 10 to the power of 6 zeros, roughly 400 pages with 50 lines per page and 50 digits per line. To print all the zeros in a Googleplex, that is printing a Google zeros, one will require around 10 to the power of 94 of such books. If each book weighed approximately 100 grams, the entire collection would have a combined mass of about 10 to the power of 93 kilograms. For comparison, the mass of Earth is roughly 5.97 times 10 to the power of 24 kilograms. The Milky Way galaxy is estimated to weigh around 1.8 times 10 to the 42 kilograms, and the total mass of all the stars in the observable universe is estimated at approximately 2 times 10 to the power of 52 kilos. In this context, the mass required to physically represent a Googleplex in print far exceeds the total mass of the known universe. The 
the sheer scale of a Googleplex becomes even more striking when considering its physical implications, since producing enough books to print all the zeros in a Googleplex would exhaust the world's supply of trees. Alongside this, even if every supercomputer on Earth had been dedicated to the task since the birth of the universe, estimated at around 16 billion years ago, they would still fall incomprehensibly short of generating that many digits. This concept was memorably illustrated by renowned American astronomer and science communicator Carl Sagan in his acclaimed 1980-81 PBS series Cosmos A Personal Voyage. In episode 9, The Lives of the Stars, Sagan discussed the scale of a Google and Googleplex, emphasising the fertility of attempting to write out a Googleplex in full. He noted that even if every particle in the known universe were used to represent a digit, the available space would still be insufficient to accommodate the number's full decimal expression. Carl Sagan offered another compelling illustration to convey the magnitude of a Googleplex. He proposed that if the entire volume of the observable universe were filled with fine dust particles, each measuring approximately 1.5 micrometers in diameter, the number of distinct ways in which those particles could be arranged and labelled would approximate a Googleplex. Sagan also highlighted that the estimated total number of elementary particles in the observable universe, primarily photons and other massless force carriers excluding dark matter, is approximately 10 to the power of 80, a value known as the Eddington number. He further noted that if the universe were completely filled with neutrons, leaving no empty space, it would contain roughly 10 to the power of 128 particles, still vastly smaller than a Googleplex. To provide historical context, Sagan referenced the ancient Greek mathematician Archimedes, who in his work The Sand Reckoner estimated that the universe, as conceived by Aristarchus of Samos, approximately 2 light years in diameter, could hold around 10 to the power of 63 grains of sand if completely filled. Even if the much larger observable universe of today were entirely packed with sand, the total would still only amount to approximately 10 to the power of 95 grains. To reach a Google, one would need to count every grain of sand in the universe, and then repeat that process 100,000 times. But what would happen if someone attempted to count to a Googleplex? The task would far exceed the lifespan of any human civilization or planetary system. In fact, it would outlast the Earth, the solar system, and even the observable universe itself. For context, the estimated evaporation time of a supermassive black hole, one with the mass of an average galaxy, approximately 10 to the power of 11 solar masses via Hawking radiation, is on the order of 10 to the power of 100 years. This means the heat death of the universe, marking its eventual entropic demise, is expected to occur no sooner than one Google years into the future. Yet, even a number as vast as a Googleplex is trivial when compared to other extraordinarily large numbers. Despite its seemingly infinite scale, a Googleplex is still finite and pales in comparison to truly colossal mathematical constructs. One such number is Graham's number, named after American mathematician Ronald Lewis Graham. It surpasses not only a Googleplex, but also other enormous quantities such as Skuza's number and Moses' number, both of which already exceed a Googleplex by an unimaginable margin. The term Google gained widespread public recognition through its association with the famous American multinational technology company Google. In 1998, founders Sergey Brin and Larry Page registered their new venture under the name Google, an accidental misspelling of Google. According to Brennan Page, the name reflected their ambition to develop an expansive search engine capable of indexing and organizing vast quantities of information. Reinforcing this concept, they later named their corporate headquarters in California the Googleplex, and nod to their mathematical terms extraordinary scale. The word also gained pop culture notoriety as the focus of the one million pound question in a 2001 episode of the British quiz show Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? The episode became infamous when contestant Charles Ingram was discovered to have cheated his way to the top prize with the assistance of an accomplice in the audience. This hasn't made Jack, and please write your comments in zeros down below.